Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Good to see everyone. And for those of you who are just coming in, you may have missed a very powerful confession this morning. <laughs> We're indeed thankful to be here. We're blessed to be here. <clears throat> and we hope that all is well with you, family, friends, and, and loved ones. Grab well, a hymn, you'll, if you will. Turn with me to number 153, Footprints of Jesus. This will be our first song for this morning, Worship Hour. After this song, we'll have a opening prayer by Brother Quan. 153. Sweetly, Lord, we are worthy, calling, come, follow me, and we sing where my brothers are falling, please us Thank you for always being with us, O oh Lord, carrying us, O oh Lord. Thank yes, you for Lord. church, O oh Lord. I just want to say thank you, O oh Lord. I love you and I need you. In yes, your name Lord. I pray. Amen. 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 Number 743 will be our next song. 743. Please note that the song of invitation will be noted by the preacher. That communion table will be served by MD, Tony, and Jay. That cups will be picked up by Moses and Antoine. And we'll have a closing prayer by the month. 743. We'll work for Jesus comes. Amen. Oh, let us rest for thee, my sighing, where the moment comes, when I shall 
those things that we heard and and and, and encourage and uh and some and some of us been blessed both ways uh urge and encourage uh, and to strengthen and to be reminded that we are not alone in this battle so again Amen. welcome to you for visiting with us Amen. and as always if you have any questions concerning anything you hear feel free to let us know at the end of service so give us a call through the week and we'd be glad to have bible studies with you over the phone in your home here at the building just wherever you're comfortable with uh all that is free no strings attached and uh and it's available uh to you uh birthdays for april um, Miss Helen Stevenson uh, was yesterday. Trisha McKinley was uh, yes. be the tenth. Moses Smiley the twelfth. Crystal Smiley the thirteenth. Miss Bonnie Gill the fifth. Mason is it today, Mason? Mason the seventh. Uh, okay, well, all those are still with us. Okay, those are physical birthdays. With, and if you're here on birthday cake, we'll be, you, you begin balloons now. Uh, we we'll upgrade. <laughs> cake and balloons. So, so, uh, I can't wait to get my little balloon. No, no. Brooklyn, you'll be 13 tomorrow. Okay, all right. All right. All right. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> Another birthday. I'm back. You're you, you yeah, not trying. No. Jason on the 12th. On the 12th, okay. On the 12th. Okay. 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 All right. I thought it was Mason, but Mason just said he was today. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, happy birthday to all of y'all. And be on cake days. You get a balloon. <laughs> you don't tell you what you like to get out of the Need the family dollar store tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for you that don't know, family dollar in Edinburgh going out of business, 90% off everything in the store. Uh, hopefully you already knew that but uh it ain't much left but it, it's a lot of stuff still left but it ain't the, 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 the gravy is gone <laughs> now just to the mashed potatoes <laughs> so uh but it's still some great deal so i plan to be that nine and if that lad long i guess i come back home and go back later uh the line standing all the way out to the road but uh nine percent off you pay this is a dollar you pay ten cents and if it's $2, you pay 20 cents. I got me so many raisins and stuff, I don't know what to do. I'll be shaving 10 years from now, no raisins. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, but like I said, most of that kind of stuff is gone. So I don't want to get your hopes up if you had been. But it's still some stuff, all kind of notebooks, poster, poster board, unless they bought it up yesterday out of there. <laughs> And they open the day unless they buy it up today. It's seventy five percent off today, and then they go to ninety percent off and it's still close there. And uh, but there's plenty of poster boards, balloons, all kind of decoration stuff. Uh, I'm gonna probably give me some of the things. You know, you blow it out. <laughs> probably give me some of those if they steal some of plenty of them there. I'm like, man, I get some of those. I get them and give them to my little grandkids when they come around. Want to be all outside and then you're all blowing in your face. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, it's all it was. Now, you may go there today and it's gone. They may have bought it up yesterday. It may not be nothing on the shelf to set the 5% off, but 9% uh, off, I'm going to go check the shelf. Uh, so, I plan to be there at 9. It just depends on my wife there whether she going with me or not. And uh, she said, No, I'm going to be there at 9. I'm going to be there at 9. If she's going with me, then we may go a little later. Yeah. Whatever it takes to get her to go, if she's going to go. Uh, and she probably want to go because she probably don't want me to go in there and come out with a whole truckload of most stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so she may want to go and keep me in check. No, oh, no, no, no. Slow down, baby. Maybe we need you. She said, we got enough balloons to get us to uh, uh, 30, 60 years from now. We we'll have some of them below. <laughs> but anyway, whatever that's worth to you. Uh, uh, spiritual birthday. My wife was baptized on April the 8th. Uh, 
This morning, I want to talk to you on a lesson from Jesus. Just one lesson from Jesus, uh, in a sense. If you'd be turning to Luke 12, 1, where we'll jump, we'll be our jumping our place, and then when we leave there, we'll go somewhere else. But in, 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 in Luke chapter 12, verse 1, a lesson from Jesus. Our gospel meeting will be uh, June 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Uh, we'll be getting some things printed out on that and in the fall year, hopefully in the next few days. Uh, but uh, June the 2nd, that on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, with uh, Jerome Wilson, uh, Charles Warren, and James Savage, the Monsons. We're going to let them do the younger guys do the meeting this year to start the guys starting out to do the meeting this year so that'd be june the second third and fourth uh, fellowship meal that sunday but in luke 12 1 it says in the meantime when they when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people in so much that they trod one upon another he began to say unto his disciple first of all and this is going to even be tied to what we even did this morning. It said, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Jesus got all this big old crowd of people. And when he does spend this time warning them about other people, the Pharisees. The Pharisees was the elite of that day and time. They were the all in all, they you couldn't get no higher than a Pharisee, Sadducees, right up there with scribes, which some of the Sadducees and Pharisees were scribes, along with being a Pharisee or a Sadducee. So, this is the top, this is the cream on the crop, the Pharisee. These are the most religious people in the land, and Jesus says. These most religious people in the land, I want you to be aware of them. Yeah. Leaven is something that spreads. Like putting sugar in peas, putting stuff in your bread. Well, you don't have to put it in no more. We just can't just put it in the bread to make the bread right. Now it comes to self rising flour, self rising stuff. So we don't we don't have to have that little clabber girl. Where you dip the little teaspoon or two out and throw it over there when you're making cornbread like I used to make when I was little. I clap a girl every time. Now you just buy it, mix it up with egg, a little water, a little milk, and I'll put it in that oven. And man, it's mighty good. All that go all through and through. He says to them, beware of ye of the leaven of the Pharisee, which is hypocrisy. And then we're going to illustrate what he's saying by going to Mark chapter 7. Go to Mark chapter 7. Here, the religious people, who are the leaders of the people, who got the biggest crowds, who got most people following them, these are the T.D. Jakes dollar of that day and time. And they got all these people listening to them, following them, believing in them. And Jesus says to the regular people that are following him, beware of these folk who you think are right with God and don't let what they're doing leaven you. Don't let their way of dealing with things spread to you. Don't let their beliefs and their practices spread to you on a certain level. And so if you're turning to Mark 7, we find an example of what Jesus is warning them about. Because we find the Pharisees there. And we find an old for me example that we preach on all the time to try to help people. It says in Mark 7, 1, then came together to him the Pharisees that he just said in chapter 12, beware of these religious people. And certain other scribes which is the next step down to some degree, 
which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of this disciple eat bread with the fowl, that is to say with unwashed hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, I mean, he said all the Jews, except they wash their hands often, eat not holding the traditions of the elders. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots and brazen vessels and of tables. Then the Pharisees and the scribe asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? In other words, they saw Jesus doing something that went against what they believed. And what they practice. They believe you need to wash your hands before you eat. And most of us believe it's going to wash your hands before you eat. Yeah. But ain't many of us going to condemn somebody if they don't wash their hands before they eat. We just say, oh, I wouldn't do that. Because the boy that plowed a mule all day growing up, we never washed our hands. Whatever water we had, we drank it in that mason jar. But we couldn't afford thermal. The thermal. The only thing we could afford is you, you buy something and come in a jar, you eat up all the peanut butter out of it, the jelly out of it, or whatever out of it, and then that's your glass. And you better not break it because you're going to get beat down by the moment you break one of them jelly or peanut butter jar. All these jars, y'all, young folks throw in the trash. My mom and dad treasure those jars. We didn't throw no glass jar in the trash. We ate out of it. We drink out of it. We store stuff in it. We tend stuff in it. None of that went to waste. And it hurts me now when I get that pretty little thing from Kentucky Fried Chicken with the mashed potato and gravy in it. It's so pretty to me. And you pop it up, you pack, I just want to take them all home. I hate to throw that in the trash. It's so pretty. Now you have to understand my background coming up eating out of mason jars and all of that. Them little Things they put that mashed potato gravy back. Oh, they look pretty to me. Stuff that you throw away. Some of the cups they put your drinks in. I didn't want to take them things home and keep them. And I know some of y'all have done that because I've come to your house and you got all the things stacked up. You got a little me in you, little my mama and daddy. In you. You're still keeping all that stuff you ain't gonna never use. You got that cup from, from that plastic cup from Hardy's and that big plastic cup from this and that big plastic cup from that. You, 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 you're hoarding all of that stuff. Can't drink out of all of them. Just got to let it go one day because it's not your kids all when they come clean your house out after that. <laughs> so what are you saying, preacher? They just believe you should wash your hands. And we understood country people who didn't have running water, didn't have an outhouse. We knew that that, that was normal. You, you're walking down the road, you see some plums, you see some uh, pears, you see some uh, weed that we used to pull up grass and eat the grass, certain grass you could eat. Uh, hey, you ain't got time to wash your hands. And look, I'm still here. Ain't none of that kill me. All my sisters and brothers, except for two, council got them, but council got one, some got, but all the rest of us are seven still living. And we all ain't. We tore it up. I hate the dirty, sweaty, and everything else. So we know a little dirt, like Jesus is going to say, is not going to hurt your kid. It, it is good to have certain things you touch. You need to make sure you wash your hands. But for us, a sin, they had made laws and rules in the congregation that were not from God. They were from man. They were from the elders. They were from other people. And today, you and I are getting a lesson from Jesus that we need to be aware of the leaven of the Pharisees because that still exists today. You got the folks at the top making rules and regulation, and they're saying, if you are going to be holy, you're going to be spiritual, you're going to be right with the Lord, then this is what you should be doing. And if you ain't doing this, there's something wrong with you. And then they look down. And here they had the audacity to jump Jesus. And question Jesus about his faults. And y'all are gonna get jumped. Well, uh, why, why, why y'all ain't doing this over here at Ivy Street? Why y'all not doing this in the Church of Christ? 
Why y'all don't do this? Why y'all don't do that? You're going to hear that. They think you're visiting. Then they find out you're visiting over here. They really going to jump you. Girl, we believe you're going over there. Girl, what's wrong with you? Now, all the places in Philadelphia, why you got to go over there? I know you're hearing it. And if you ain't, you're, you're happy, you will. Just tell the right people. And then all of a sudden, they're going to go to talking to you, and they ain't never been talking to you before. Trying to talk to you out of coming back over here. Girl, man, I don't know why you want to hear. Don't you know what they believe? Don't you know what they this, 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 this? And then and, and, and some of them will just go to laugh. Telling you stuff they don't, they can't prove if you slept them five times. Just running their lip, making up stuff, spreading false rumors and all of this, trying to stop you. And people even jack me up from time to time. Oh, 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 oh. Brother Beck, why you ain't got no piano? Why you ain't got no organ like everybody else? Why you ain't got this? Why you ain't got that? Why you ain't got no choir up there behind you? Where your choir? Where your ursers? You ain't got no ursers? <laughs> People even want to know that. And why this? And why that? And I thank God I know my Bible. And if you didn't know this, you'll know it after today. Verse 5 of Mark 7. I hope you read along with us. I mean, verse 5 of Mark, of Mark chapter 7. Then the Pharisee, the scribe, asked him, Why walk not thy disciple according to the tradition of the elders, elders but eat bread from unwashed hands? And here's Jesus' lesson for us. Why he says, This is why he's saying, Watch these Pharisees. They make room. That are not bad. They have you doing things that God hadn't told you to do. They find ways around what God says and establish their own rules. And therefore, you ain't really following the Bible when you follow these people. You follow man. And that's why Jesus warned his disciples, beware of the leaven of the Pharisee, because if you get to follow man and don't realize it, heaven is not going to be your home for that. So let's see Jesus' response. He answered verse 6 and said unto them, Well, as Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, Jesus called the religious people who got the biggest crowd, who got the most members, he says, y'all just a bunch of hypocrites. Amen. And the way word and wisdom work, you can't be wrong if you got the crowd. That's the way our minds work if we don't know Jesus. That's how your mind work out there if you don't know Jesus. You think the truth is always where the biggest crowd is. You think if the big, if the crowd is there, it must be right. If the crowd is there, there must be something good going on. You know, one got shot up at the club the other night. They found out it, it, it looked like something good was going on to the bullet went the flying. And now some of them did. Should have been at Christmas. Then you wouldn't have got a straight bullet. You wouldn't have got shot. You wouldn't have got in the wall for making no half drunk joke. Because you stepped on the shoe and knocked the beer out of the hand. Or you look like you looked at his woman. Or she, you look like you looked at her man. You didn't have to worry about getting scratched up. Jesus said this. In 6, he answered and said to them, Well, as Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrite, folks said, Johnny, y'all the church of Christ, y'all always talking about people. We got it from Jesus. Now, if you want to not like us, but we got, we act like our Savior, and we act like our daddy God, then so be it. Our daddy talked about people. Our Savior talked about people. We got it from growing up in Christ from them. Well, y'all be saying something good to people. Y'all not be saying all that negative stuff to people. Well, Jesus did. God did. You want us not to act like God? Yeah, that's what a lot of people want us to act not like God. They want to be like the Pharisees. He says, again, 
He answered and said unto them, Well, as Isaiah prophesied to you, hypocrites. Jesus, you calling folk hypocrites to their face? Here the Pharisees standing right there, just jumped Jesus because he didn't watch, his disciples didn't wash their hands when they ate. And they said, Jesus, why are your disciples not washing their hands like the elders say? And Jesus told them to their face, Isaiah prophesied about you hypocrites. Don't you know that they eyes must have booked and they lip must have got mad? Because Jesus called them, the Pharisees, the one that got the biggest membership, the one that got most people bother them, and Jesus, you had a audacity that when we question you, to look at us and call us hypocrites. You can't call nobody what's worse than that. Back in this time, then a hypocrite. He said, as is written, there's people talking about the Pharisees. There's people honor me, work their lips. But their heart, we say this, but it's really this, is far from me. Any word, lip service, the world is full of it. Heart service, very little. Everybody you meet, do you love Jesus? Oh, yeah, 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 I love Jesus. Doing all kinds of sinful stuff. Do you love me? Yeah, 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 I love Jesus. In John 14, 15, she says, if you love me, keep my commandments. She said, if you don't keep my commandments, in John 14, 15, 16, 17, 20, 21, he said, he that keepeth not my commandment, loveth me not. Jesus don't, Jesus don't, don't water it down. Jesus said, it's the only way that you can love me, you have to do what I tell you to do. As long as you ain't doing what I tell you to do. You don't look. I can walk right in this building and make everybody around you a liar, just like that. All I got to do is knock on the door and ask them all in there. Do you love Jesus? Yeah, we love Jesus. You know I love, man. I love Jesus. Some, oh. Yeah, yeah, I love Jesus. They don't even know what that means. Because the Pharisees out there have made them think it's one thing when the God says it's something different. And as I told you before, when I was in high school, I slipped to Melissa and them girls, I was messing with them. They got mad. They said, you going to hell? And I told them, yeah. And then they said, I bet you don't even love the Lord. And I said, I don't. Oh! Oh, I, I got blasphemed. They ran to all my teachers. Oh, Johnny said he don't love Jesus. Johnny said he don't love Jesus. Johnny said he don't love Jesus. Teacher called me in there and had a little talk with me. I told y'all this story many times. You can hear it many more times. I prayed the Lord let me find John 14, 15. I was a devil, but I prayed. But when I looked out of the room, I could tell my teacher thought I was messed up. And I knew I wasn't messed up like that. And I went down there and found them Gideon and the little testament, brought it back. Pray the Lord put them through there. I, I knew it was in the red. I went to church just enough to know it's in the red. So I didn't look at nothing in the black. So act home, don't look at that. I just kept looking at Matthew Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew Mark, Luke, and John. Found it by the grace of God only. A devil at 17 years of age found me. Went back to that room, showed it to my teacher. Why did my chest stuck out? I walked in there, let her red. Cause looking down on me like I'm dirt now because I said I was little Jesus. And then she read it. She said, I guess a lot of us don't love Jesus. Don't you? She didn't have nothing. It took the air out of her. She didn't have nothing. She said, because she didn't believe it. I told her in the Bible she didn't believe me. I was 17. She a school teacher, BA degree or master degree. She don't even know that's in the Bible. She goes to church all the time. Because these Pharisees ain't going to teach you those kind of things. So the Bible says, and if you leave here, go ask these people drinking, smoking, cussing, lying, and everything else, do they love Jesus? And I already can tell you what, 90% of them, 99.9% is going to tell you, yeah, yeah, I love Jesus. Just cuss you out, and they'll still tell you they love Jesus. And then they're going to jump on you if you tell them that you they, they don't love Jesus. And I told them, you don't love Jesus. They got mad at me. 
and I was just blessed that they went and got their Bible. Because he said, never let me be no mess like that. How are you going to tell me I don't love Jesus? I ain't going to try to tell you nothing. I'm trying to tell you what God is trying to tell you. When they read John 14, 15, they angry one away, most of them. And we were cool after that. They, most of them didn't want to talk no more after that. What are you saying, preacher? Lip service. Everybody saying they love Jesus, but ain't nobody want to do what he said. Why? Because their heart is far from me. How big in vain do they worship me? They have Jesus. Jesus, can you get this? Here's the Pharisee. Just jump Jesus. And Jesus looking at them in their face and he's saying to them, y'all are hypocrites. Y'all are lip servicers. And y'all are really, really messed up. And y'all jumping me. Y'all questioning me. When all of your worship is no good. Notice Jesus said. They were worshiping God. But he said it wasn't no good. And that's the condition of 90 some percent of the people who claim to be Christians in the short camp. White, black, chopped all night. You got all these folks in the church buildings this morning. And very few of them is living right. Very few of them is following God. That's why the days of Noah on the eighth was saved. Because the same problem existed back then. Psalm said nothing new on the sower. Same problem we got today. Everybody want to claim to be a Christian, claim to be living for God, claim to love the Lord, claim that they worship God, and don't understand it ain't about whether you're worshiping God, it's about is it any good? You may be worshiping God, but the question is, is it any good? Jesus here is letting you know you can worship God all the days of your life and none of it be any good. How be it in vain do they worship me? Teaching for doctrines and commandments of men. All you got in your church is commandments of men. All you got in the lifestyle you live in, commandments of men. Men are telling you this is okay. Men are telling you you can do it this way. Men are telling you you don't have to do it that way. And you just eating it up and following it. And God's word is saying something totally different. So you're going through all the motions of worship. But it's not any good. And young folk, you need to understand that you go to church every Sunday and your worship and your service not be worth a hill of beans. Because if what you spent your time doing is what man came up with and what man is uh, got you doing and it's not what God says, your worship is in vain. Even at this moment I speak. And if you ain't living right and you claim to be worshiping God, then God said, that's a joke. And then he shows them how. But they say, now, now, man, it's all the world. We the Pharisees, we got all the people following up. We the smartest, the brightest, the most richest. They the smartest, the brightest, the richest. They, they the most everybody of any group of people. And you tell them, look, we broke, we've been blessed. If we've lost, why have we been blessed to be so smart and so rich and so powerful and have all these folks following us if we're not saved, if we're not right with God? That's how people of the world are. Ain't nobody going to tell me I ain't saved. I got this big old house over here, and I got them nice cars, and I got that clean, clean. What they call it? Bling, bling, bling. I call it clean, clean. <laughs> And you're going to tell me I ain't saved and I got money in the bank and I ain't like you running around doing this, 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 begging for money, can't hardly pay your bills. And you're going to tell me, huh? Jesus, you don't even own a house. Because Jesus did. He never owned a house the whole time he was here. He lived with people from the time he started his ministry. He just lived with people as he preached the word and said it to say. He lived with whoever. Sometimes just live out there in the garden. Like he was homeless almost. And they looking at him, you ain't got nothing. 
And you telling us that we hypocrites, our worship is in vain? Look what God has done for us. And people don't understand, blessing don't have nothing to do with salvation per se. God blesses everybody, the good and the bad. He let the rain fall on the good and the bad. He tells you in the Bible, he blessed the bad, hoping they'll stop being bad. But that's what he did for me. He kept blessing me. And I kept saying, I can't keep living like the devil. God blessed me in this way. God is saying, blessing me. That's what brought me in. God had been blessing me. I wouldn't have came in. I could say, well, I know I'm okay. Go look at God blessing me better than everybody else. Look at all of what I got going on. I must be saved. I must be all right. God was telling me the whole time, boy, you're going to buzz here wide open if you don't do something with people. Bless and I had enough sense to realize I'm going to buzz here wide open if I don't do something with people. Bless and I got married 18 and straightened my life up. And everybody called me a fool and stupid and all of that. Even a guy that's a Baptist preacher told me that you can lead the view to the water, but you can't make a drink because he didn't want me to marry her. People tell me, man, you don't want to get married. You just 18, man. You don't want to get married at 18. You just got a job. <laughs> then he said, well, you can't lead the view to the water, but you can't make a drink. I just looked at him. I said, I know who God is. I read enough as a devil in the Bible to know if you try to do right, God will bring you to. And at 18, I had enough faith in that that I said, I'm giving it up, I'm getting married, and everybody thought I was a fool. And when I look back, if I'd have been a devil, I said I was a fool too. Still, <laughs> I've been another devil. I was a boy, you 18 years old. You better get married. And you ain't been working. You come up when you get your first paycheck, you get married. And that's when I got married. I had my first patient. I had enough faith in God that if I got a job, I could take care of it. So that was it for the streets for me. So I know what God can do when you're young or old if you want to, if you see his goodness. I saw the goodness and I knew if God, if I don't do something with his goodness, he's going to take it away. And I didn't want him to take away. And plus, he had touched me in a way that I just, something happened. And all of a sudden, I just wanted to, to do the right thing. I didn't want to be dating her and not marrying her, messing with her and not marrying her, shaming her name. I didn't want to do that. Shame my God's name. I want to do the right thing. If I get a baby, I want to take care. I don't want nobody else taking care of my baby. I don't know where other people's minds are, but that's just where mine is. By the grace of God, He brought me through, and He'll bring you through. A for laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men. As for washing of pots and cups and many other such like things you do. And he said unto them, For well, ye reject the commandment of God that you may keep your own tradition. He said, God, where it will say something. You said it aside. And come up with the way you think it should be done. And then everybody will follow it. So that's tradition. Because it didn't come from God. And it goes against what God said. God says these things. Y'all just lay them aside. Oh, I know. I know that what that Bible said. But I just feel times and change. I just feel the world and changes. I just feel like, you know. And then people change them. They get enough votes and they change it right there in the church house. Just like they do in the political ring. Ten, he gives them one example, it's many, but he just gives them one. He said, For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curses father or mother, let him die to death. Jesus says, Honor the law, 
one of the Ten Commandments taught that if you don't honor your father and mother, you are so pitiful that God wants you killed. He wants people to kill you and get your behind off the face of the earth. If you're that sorry and lazy and no good. That's what God said. God said, any sorry child, kill him. If he don't do right by his mom and dad, get rid of that devil, and now we'll let him talk back to us. We'll let him do all kinds of stuff to us. Can't kill us sometimes. And then we still trying they just, they, they tell us to our faith. Yes, stupid. I know some of y'all heard that. But you know what you wanted to do. Oh, you wanted to jump slap them so hard. You did not know what to do. You prayed that you didn't grab their neck and choke their life out of them. Because I brought you in this world and that guy saying, I'll take you out. And I'm praying, God, get this girl from me. Girl, you better get out of my face. Boy, you better get out of my face right now because you don't know. You don't know. You are, oh, you don't want to sleep. Oh, you better get out of here. And some have reached over to choke them, and some have shot them, and some have cut them and stabbed them. Because what they knew is they had done it. You want to call me stupid? But children, when the devil get in them, they'll call you stupid to your face. They'll tell you you don't even know what's going on. You older than they are, and they're telling you you don't know what's going on. God said, I told you to kill that devil. But you know, ah, oh, you know how we get, oh, you know, oh, you know, yeah, I know God said that. And not, not tell, not, not, not go, don't go home, kill your child today. No, it, it was under the law. Jesus, Jesus changed that thing. He said, now, no, you're kidding me. Do good. I'm going to straighten it out quick for all of you. Now go home and kill them today. Many times you call you stupid. Some of them may come over you. And next thing you know, you just walk in the house with a chocolate. And he's like, where's she been today? What wrong? <laughs> Mama and just went to, I ain't saying nothing. She didn't come in and don't choke in me. What happened at church today? <laughs> Preaching they clarify. So don't go home and kill them. Put them out. So if you got a child who do what you tell them to do, you all put their behind out. Don't let the dough hit them on the way out. And until they calm themselves and say they're ready to do better, don't give them another dime, another pity. Until that time come to pass. Or they fool you again. But at least you can say they fool me again. But if you know they ain't hitting on nothing, I wouldn't give them no war. Unless they were that. They on their own. You grown? Well, be grown. I'm grown. Take care of myself with the God's help. You gonna take care of yourself with God's help. Since you're so grown, and since you're smarter than me, you're going to be doing better than me by tomorrow. <laughs> and since I'm so stupid, that means ain't nobody getting over on you. Since you're the small one. So I might have a rich child, a grandchild, in a few months. they so small and know what, what's going on. But that should be the deal, you know. And you didn't try to beat it out of that don't work, put them out. I put my own mom out of my house and she went that way. So in a nursing home. Go live with your sister, but you can't stay here if you don't respect my rule. I ain't got nowhere to go. Well, you better act right. Because you'll be homeless. But you sure ain't staying up in here messing us up. He says, but ye say, if a man should say to his father and mother, it is Corbin, that is to say a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profit by me, he shall be free. He said, you came up with a rule that said, if he gives so much money to in the collection, if you give it so much money to, we would say today to the church, then you ain't got to take care of your mom and dad. Don't you take care of the church? 
No, you got them, 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 them offerings. Yeah, okay, what you do to your mama when you come to dance? But if you don't have that, you're in trouble. You don't put something in that, you're in trouble. But now if you don't take care of your mama and dad, we cool. No one should take care of that. But that's all we care about in the back. Is what you put in there. That's how bad they got. Here they are rebuking Jesus. And they let folk come in and say, well, we're going to give so much to the, to the, to, we will say that, to the congregation. And then, and then when the mom and dad say, they sure ain't doing what they're supposed to do, they say, well, it's all right. Because, you know, they, they gave it to the congregation. They said they ain't got nothing left for you. Because they give, they, they, they what they were going to give you, they gave it to them. Can you imagine somebody saying they say? Come up with some mess like that. God says you need to help your mama and your dad. Now, we need to change this thing. The mama and dad is helping the children. The time you need to calm children. When you really get grown, you need to start helping your mama and daddy. That's the way God intended it. Daddy took care of you for 20, 30, 40, some of you 50, 60 years. You ought to come to a point somewhere where you begin to say, Mama, uh, first of the month, not how much you can let me have this month, Mama, but Mama, here's something for you. Now I got my chick. Here's something for you, Mama. Go do this, Mama. Go do that, Mama. Come on, Mama. We're going to go buy you this. We're going to go buy you that. You, you sacrifice when you were y'all. Now we, I don't want sacrifice. I want you to have some of the nice stuff these old grandmamas and had. And still, <laughs> Some of them 65, they still got their head out. <laughs> Supposed to be the other rug up around. Mama's supposed to be able to reach your head. I said, boy, our social security check ain't that much. Can you help us out? He said, yes, mama. Yes, mama. But these folks said, well, I got to get that, get that to the touch. I got to get that to the touch. So I can't give you nothing because I, I pledged that to the touch. I made a vow to the touch. And you don't take care of your mom or your dad. God said that, that, that's that hypocrisy. When God give a law, he don't care what's going on in your life. He wants you to do what he asks you to do. And if you do, he'll fix it where you can. Verse 12, and you suffer him no more to do all for his father and his mother. Making the word of God of none effect through your traditions, which ye have delivered, and many such like things to you. He said, you're doing a whole lot of messages like this. And that's why I called you a hypocrite. That's why I told you your worship is in vain. That's why I told you that you, your heart ain't right. Even though you think it is. That's why I'm rebuking you to your face. I ain't getting behind your back and telling you. I'm telling you to your face. Now let me show you how they do that today. Turn to 1 Timothy. Passage you've seen and heard many times with me. You're going to hear it many, many more times because they just make the point so easy. First Timothy chapter 3, verse number 8. These just work with just about anything you do. You're trying to make this kind of point. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 8. First Timothy, on past Acts, on past Romans. On past Corinthians, on past Galatians, on past Ephesians, on past Philippians, Colossians, first and second Thessalonians, and then you'll be there. You see Hebrews, a revelation you've gone too far. Bag it up a little bit. It's in front of Hebrews. So in first Timothy chapter three, verse eight, it said, Likewise, must the deacons be great. That means serious man. Not double tongued. I mean, it can't be two faced. When they say something, they got to stand. It. Not giving them much wine, can't be a drunk. Not greed or fit the look. If I stopped there, I wouldn't have to, I, I could make this point I'm going to make, but I'm not. But if I just stopped there, man, he's a uh, uh, so brother, so and so, he's a good man. He, he's a good man, you know. Uh, he drank a little bit. He, he get a little high every now and then, but when you when he ain't drunk or high, he a good man. He'll help you. He know that Bible. 
And you know what? The devil, them, some of the devils are the ones know the Bible better than the same folk. Hope I go down, I'm going back down to jail tomorrow. So no guys in jail know more about the Bible than half these folk going to church every Sunday down here. Guys in the jail know more about what right or wrong than folk that go to church every Sunday. That blows my mind. And some of them ain't for 20 something. And they know more than some of these people out here going to church at 60 years of age, 70 years of age. They already there when I get there. When I show them some, they say, oh yeah, I, I already know that brother Ben. I already know that John. Well, I, I, I just don't see nothing wrong with a man being a deacon. I, I don't see, uh, we, as bad as we need men, I don't see why we should hold a man back because he drank a little bit. Oh, you know, I know he tells some tales sometimes, but, but you know, uh, we need some deacons. Verse 9, hold the mission of the faith in a pure conscience. 10, and let these also first be proved. Don't you know that church is around here? If you're a man, you can walk in there today and show back up next Sunday and they'll go to talk about it. You keep coming. Yeah, they think about making you a deacon. You keep coming. We have to think about making you a student. The Bible says he has to prove himself. You can't prove yourself in two Sundays. You can't do that in a year. Go back and watch your wife. And I had a young guy, a black guy, he said, Johnny, my wife had left me for another man. And they still won't make me a deal. And he said, I had visited that church but two times. I was there trying to make up with my wife. <laughs> Yeah, you keep coming. We, we, so I don't make this stuff up. Oh, oh, tell me this stuff. You won't never know who told me. But people out there will tell you stuff. And he said, I told him. He said, John and I, even I knew I couldn't be no people. My wife then ran off with another man, and then I'm trying to get up. She's trying to get back with me now because he didn't drop her. And I make good money. He make good money. And now she's running back home like in the movies, y'all, to watch. They know where the sugar is. The other guy had more sugar than he had. But after the guy dropped her, she didn't have that extra sugar no more. So she had to go back to the, the, the original sugar there. <laughs> and she was so pretty and everything, he, he was really wanting to, he was willing to take her back. He said, I'm going to take her back. He said, I'm just going to take her back and test her. I'm going to take her back and test her. He said, I don't think she didn't change. She said she didn't change. I'm going to test her. I don't believe it. But he loved her so much. He's going to let, he, he let him come on back home. He got a home and everything. The other guy just had a bigger home and bigger money. What are you saying, Richard? He even knew he couldn't be no dicker. He didn't even have a wife. That he can call a wife. And let these also first be proved, then let them use the office of a deacon being found blameless. They say, Oh, I know he knew some things wrong, but he's still a good man. And I don't believe we should hold him back because they ain't, you know, hear our favorite line, because ain't none of us perfect. Don't you think God knew that when he wrote this in the Bible? That ain't none of us perfect. But a lot of us who hadn't been perfect can get our life cleaned up where oh, if people know we are blameless. Yeah. They can't find no fault. That's all God says. You ain't got to be perfect, but you can't find no fault in it. You got it, you better have it. Because if you see it, he can't be no deacon. But they say, oh, we shouldn't hold a good man back. Especially when he want to work. He a devil, but he want to work. He want to work. He'll be him more than some of you that, that, that ain't that's supposed to be saved. They'll get up there and bust about all kinds of stuff. Lay it aside for God's sake. Lay it aside for God's sake. Lay it aside for God's sake. Just like what we read. Lay it aside. God said he got to be blameless. Boys, you know you can't find no fault in it. You can find fault. I ain't talking about what you think. I'm talking about what you can prove. If you can prove that he's doing something wrong, he can't be no deep. 
And for the men, well, no, that joker ain't doing right out there pulling with them young women, thinking he's still young, old with these people houses, hanging out, saying stuff he shouldn't be saying to them women. You know he's doing it, but he show up on church on Sunday, and he ain't think he got some money. He need to make him a deal. Then it says, even so must their wives be grave, not slanderous, sober, faithful in all things. Oh, they really get upset. I, 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 I don't think you should hold that again. Oh, they can't make no woman do nothing. Well, God, are you stupid to put this in the Bible? To tell us this is the way it's supposed to be? Did you say God's stupid? Because that's what you're saying. God's so stupid, he didn't know no better. God didn't know you can't make no and you can't make no woman do right. That's why God said. This goes to your character. Do you know how to pick a wife? Because you know how to pick a wife, you can pick a woman that'll be faithful. If you don't know how to pick one, you're going to get the wild thing. <laughs> There's a lot of women before them, and I knew they were the wild thing. <laughs> I just told them I love you, I love you, baby, and, and say, if you're that stupid to believe it, when I only call you every now and then, then you deserve what I'm doing to you. It's 1670, that's how I feel. And that's how they still feel, by the way. If you're stupid enough for us to play you, you deserve to be played. That's how the word of God views it. But when I met that, whoo! She was so good looking, I thought she was playing me. Because I'm like, what's she going to me? And that was some of y'all see. I don't know what she's seeing here. I don't know what she's seeing. I came here one of the members sitting up here now. When he my first came through there in 1980, first thing he said, he, he hollered. What's she, what are you doing with her? What's she doing? He, he, so he, he would let me know. He think I looked at that dude. When I came to Philadelphia, he could not understand how I got that. At 130 something pounds. And one long hair back then. I didn't understand. <laughs> I sure told God, I'm going to straighten up and fly right. You done blessed me. I've been feeling blessed ever since. I love her. So, what are you saying, preacher? Oh, uh, uh, you know, he, he, she may not do right. Well, he can't be no deacon. That's what God is saying. He, he made a mistake. He married the wrong kind of mama. He can't be a deacon. But Pharisees said, all oh, this little sad. But we can't hold that against a man because he was telling I heard him trying to straighten her behind out. And I saw her. I saw her for myself. She just don't miss it. Now we're gonna hold this man back who could really help the church out, who could really do great things, because he knows the Bible and he's dedicated. He just have to have a woman that ain't gonna do nothing. We I don't feel like we should hold him back from being a big one. Because his wife ain't right. That's how they think out here. So they make him a deacon anyway. They just did what we read in Mark chapter 7. God said, you got to take care of your father and your mother. They said, oh, if you do this, though, you don't have to. And God said, you just made the word of God known of it. You just changed the word of God. Oh, well, oh, oh. I, 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 I ain't kidding. I ain't kidding about his wife. And Lord, he do right. Lord, he do right. I, I don't have, I don't have, my vote, so and so be a big they know he's got enough vote. They make him a deacon. Man, aside with God saying, I just don't understand how they do it myself on some level. I just don't understand. Because when I was a devil, I respected this here. If it said it, I, I just, I, it, you, you just a devil. If you ain't doing what this said, you just a devil. So I grew up knowing my mom and dad was just devils. I love my mom and dad now. You say about my mama, we're going to get her behind. We're going to quit. But truth be told, my mama was a devil. My dad was a bigger devil than my mama. I ain't going to lie because that's my mama. 
I love her, but she's a devil. And she's a devil that I love. <laughs> and my dad, he was a devil. And I love that joker too. He know he loved my mama and all that. Put her through all kinds. I still love that devil the day he died. But that's my dad. And I got to know Jesus so I can love him. In spite of, I do believe if he had treated her right, she wouldn't have died when she died. I really believe that in my heart. That was a good reason I hate that joker. But I did. Loved him anyway. I was in my day, and God told me to love him. Let the deacon be the husband of one wife. He got to be married, church. Well, oh, just because he ain't found no good woman yet, I don't believe y'all to hold it back. Uh, I don't believe y'all to hold nobody back because they can't let find them. Cause he, you know how them guys talk. Ain't none of you women no good. So how you gonna find a good woman? Though? Ain't hard enough none of my dear no good. You got men that don't think none of y'all no good. We know that's a lie, but they tell it anyway. And you know somebody, amen. Amen, that's right. Because they didn't have it all bad. But they ain't had enough sense to pick out the good ones. Because they all trying to get the prettiest thing. You better get you one of those not so pretty. I'm the one gonna really treat you good. Because they appreciate you. Here you are looking like last week's food, and you want the prettiest thing on the block. It ain't happening. He had better come out of class. You would be thinking you can get anybody to marry you. Let the dickens be the hub of one wife, ruling their children and their own halfway. Well, oh. Uh, his children be cutting up at church service. Made sure all under the pew, throwing stuff at people, talking to them to serve. Oh, and, and I, I, I heard him talk back to his mama. I even heard him talk back to his dad one time. Well, I, I don't think we need to hold that back with the way these kids are today. I mean, you can't want to tell his children they nothing. So how are we going to hold that against him? Because he can't do nothing with his children. Because I saw him try. He been trying. He my uncle. And I know he been trying. He my cousin. I know he been trying. And so they make him a deacon anyway. See, that's what's going on in churches. People are running churches the way they want it ran based on their word and wisdom. And at 18, when I got married, I told God I was going to give my life to him. And I said, at 18, Lord, Whatever your word says, I would do. And it don't matter who it goes against. I would do. And I didn't know it was going to be a, as bitter a pill as it's been. It's been a bitter pill. Because when you got to tell folk they can't drink and go to hell, you tell folk they can't be smoking and go to hell, you tell folk they can't be cussing and go to hell, you tell folk they can't be lying and go to hell, and all you young folk, Tell me how y'all can't be having that little sex and go to heaven. Y'all can't go to heaven having that sex. Got that little girlfriend or boyfriend and y'all got it going on. Well, mom and dad ain't around. Some of you got mom and dad to let you do it in the house and they know you're there doing it. And that really blows my mind. And I can tell you that's wrong. And if you die like that, you're going to hate it. No fornicator shall enter the kingdom of heaven, the Bible says. No adulterer shall enter the kingdom of heaven. No liar shall enter the kingdom of heaven. I have to go around and tell people this stuff. I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy telling folks that they wrong. I wish to God that all that was good, and then I wouldn't have to tell nobody. I would say, God says, all right, fornicate. God says, all right, to be a drunk. God says, all right, to talk to your mom in the kind of way. God says, all right for you to just talk to your wife in the kind of way. It's all right for you to talk to your husband in the kind of way. I wish I could say all that was, won't stop you from going to hell. I wish I could preach it. Then I would have to make one of nobody, man. But I got to keep telling folks that to the day I die. And if you a man got you a man, I got to tell them that's wrong. You a woman and got you another woman? I can tell you that's wrong. I know it's popular. They doing the men, the, the, the woman is doing the boys and the girl. What they call that bisexual. And the men's into threesome now. 
wholesome and fast. And, and it's dumb enough women out there to do that. It's dumb enough women out there to do that. You ask, 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 ask him, you gonna let me do a threesome or wholesome? And he'll be telling you, you think you're bad to get about it. That's what he and these women are bad as children because they don't know the Lord like they should. They, they don't have respect for themselves like they should. And they let these Negroes treat them any kind of way instead of having respect for yourself because God made you in his image. You ought to be saying, when I had mine at 18, if I get married, she told me I'm already too, I'm already late. <laughs> You let me know you already late. You have been in on this. I'm the late thing. She tell me I'm late. She would tell the truth. I should. Sure. But I straightened that mess out. I got mad. What are you saying, preacher? As I close. A lesson from Jesus. You living in a world where people are going to constantly take what God says in the Bible. Change it up, lay it aside, come up with something else, preach and teach that junk to you. And if you ain't careful, you're going to swallow it, hook, line, and sink. And you're going to be coming to church every Sunday, praising the Lord, shouting and hollering, and on your way to hell. And only somebody to know is God and hope to know the Bible. And then when they tell you, you want to get your lips stuck out, but they tell you you ain't right. So you can't tell me I ain't right. What about the Bible is, and the Bible already has. If you ain't living right, you ain't right. And if you are living right, then you are right. And if you hear us, we get ready to close. And you out here drinking and smoking and cussing and lying and stuff, and ain't ready to give that up, just keep coming to church. Hear and stuff that's going to remind you that that's wrong. And hopefully it'll be like it did for me. It'll spur you on to get right. Because I went to church enough to hear that I was on my way to hell. And at 18, I decided to do something back. Get right, get married, and do right. But if I hadn't went to church and heard what I heard, that probably wouldn't have happened when it did. Because on Easter Sunday, I was going to church on all my new suit and shoes and stuff. I'm going to be in church on Easter Sunday. You know who you're going to see on Easter Sunday. J.B. and my brother, Roger, and my sisters, my daddy, all those some nice stuff every Easter. He, he believed in that. So we were decked out. If we get there, everybody will touch us. So my daddy would say some money on us for Easter. He believed in that. That you ain't going to church looking in the kind of way of Easter Sunday. Oh, everybody, that's more back children that the step in the church be at New Baptist Church. What are you saying, preacher? If you ain't ready to do right, you ain't ready to come down this aisle. You just ready to keep that seat warm until you're ready, like I was. And for me, it was 18, for you, it may be 118. The Lord let you live that long. But you need to keep that seat until then. Don't be no hypocrite. Don't jump up and get saved and they're going to do what's wrong. And young people, if you ain't ready to obey your mama and your daddy when they tell you to do something that's right, you ain't ready to go to school and act right while you're in school. And if you ain't ready to give up the girls or the boys, you ain't ready to stop lying or cussing or going in there wishing your mama was dead 25 million times. If you ain't ready to stop this stuff that you're doing that is wrong, thank you. If you ain't ready to stop all this foolishness, you ain't ready to come down that aisle. You ain't ready to go in that war. If you ain't ready to go to church every Sunday, you ain't ready to come down that aisle. If you get saved, Hebrews 10 25, so you got to come to church every time that door is open on Sunday. If you're ready to get by that bed on Sunday morning and come to church, sir, you don't need to come down that aisle. But you're just fooling yourself. You're going to be a bit more saved than a best of them. But if you're ready to start going to church every Sunday and living right and when people do you wrong, forgive them and stop hating people 
If your dad ain't no good, stop hating him. Your mama ain't no good, stop hating her. Grandma ain't treating you right, stop hating her. They, they, because you're a stepchild or whatever, somebody ain't liking you in the family, you hating them. You got to love them when you come down this aisle. Even when they're doing you wrong, you still got to love them. You ain't ready to do all that when you're ready to come down this aisle. But if you are ready to come down this aisle, because I don't want nobody coming down this aisle just to get no milk when you ain't, you ain't ready for the period. That wasting my time, wasting God's time, wasting your time. It needs to be for real to come down that aisle. And if you believe, truly believe, you'll come down that aisle, right? Because you'll be ready to repent of your sin. Luke 13, 3, I tell you, nay, except you repent, you're all likewise fair. You'll confess Christ that he's the son of God. And you'll go in that water and have all of them seen that you know and don't know you to tell them washed away. And then you'll get up and you'll be just like me. Can't wait till Sunday come. Can't wait till the next Sunday come. Can't wait till the next Sunday come. Couldn't wait to get I got married on that Friday. I went to church that Sunday. I could wait to go to my friend and tell, tell all them girls, I'm sorry how I treated you. I'm sorry what I did to you. And some of them girls were so messed up, they said, Oh, you didn't do me wrong for a night. My goodness. You don't even have enough sense. You're so messed up that even when I'm telling you I was doing you wrong, but I didn't love you. I didn't care nothing about you. But I got saved now. And, and, and I want you to know I'm sorry for what I did to you. Oh, it's all right. Wait, that's your problem. I, I don't truly sorry for what I did to you. Yeah, I'm right to them girls. I'm sorry for playing. I'm sorry for this. I'm sorry for that. Other guys, I'm sorry for jumping on you. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry for doing this. I'm sorry for doing that. Grandmama, I'm sorry for breaking in your house. Granddad, I'm sorry for breaking in your house. And if I, if I knew who to tell the school, I'm sorry for stealing from the school. Gay is out of that. Blood system. Stuff out of the teacher dance. If you're teachers, you better watch your dance. There's some Johnny Beckham's up in that school still there. If you leave your stuff in your dad, it won't be there when you come back. What do you say? I apologize. I repent. I went around and told them I'm going to church now. I'm trying to live for God. And they all thought I was a fool. They ain't thinking I'm a fool no more. What are you saying, preacher? If you're ready to come down that aisle, why not come right now? All the things I'm ready. Come to the Oh, 
The cup of day. Thanks, Mary. Right. Holy Father, thank you for some shed of love you. Thank you for the opportunity we have to take of it. We do pray that we would take of it, reflect back, and move sacrifices made. Bless my answer. Thank you for it. In the name of God, for the Lord. Amen.
opportunity to give back that that God's given us to find the friends and give and prosper also to give people to this time you'd like to give and make this so. up. Seven in the ground. So then there is a look we are going to see again. Oh, 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 oh,